A new study confirms the enthusiasm around Kamala Harris's presidential campaign is no sugar high. The analysis answers whether the Harris vibe shift could translate to low propensity voters showing up for her on Election Day. And the answer appears to be a resounding yes, showing an astonishing increase in voter registration since she became the nominee, especially among young black and Latina women. Joining us now is Tom Bonnier. He is a CEO, the CEO rather, of Target Smart, which produced that study. So, Tom, welcome. This analysis, it started on July 21st. That's the day President Biden announced he was stepping down. So in those 13 states you surveyed, voter registration among young black women shot up an incredible 175 percent compared to four years ago. Registration for young Latinas up 150 percent. Have you ever seen changes in voter registration anywhere close to this? And do you think these voters are more likely to show up and vote on Election Day? Uh, simply put, I, I haven't. Uh, two years ago, after the Dobbs decision happened, uh, we saw something. Uh, you used the word astonishing. I think it's the, the perfect word to describe what we're seeing. We saw something astonishing at that point where we, sur we saw these surges of women, especially young women, registering to vote in the aftermath of the Dobbs decision. At that point, I've been analyzing political data for almost 30 years. I'd never seen anything like it. Hmm. I was certain I would never see anything like it again. And then here we are, as you mentioned, this analysis starting on July 21st when President Biden withdrew from the race. And now we're seeing numbers, registration numbers and these types of increases that are actually exceeding the numbers that we saw two years ago. So hmm. uh, to put that in context, again, 30 years, I would I would suggest you could go back even further likely and you wouldn't find anything like that. You ask if these voters are likely to turn out. Well, we know statistically that people who register to vote in cycle, especially those who register to vote closer to Election Day, actually tend to have a much higher turnout rate than all other voters, including those who have been registered for quite some time. Hmm. So the likelihood is that these voters will be turning out in November. OK, so based on all you said, I think the word astonishing actually is apropos. Um, so these 15 states that you studied, they include both red and blue states, as well as the battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina. Did you see the same trends, Tom, along all these states? That's the other incredibly unusual thing here is we know we're a very polarized country in so many ways, and we see very different polit political trends, whether we're talking about a blue state, a red state, or a so-called purple state, a swing state. And what we've seen in this analysis, as we look at this analysis, and again, you're sharing the states that we're looking at, it is a, a pretty even mix of uh, very red so-called Republican states, uh, very safe Democratic states from a presidential perspective in these swing states. But the one thing they have in common is this massive increase in registration led by women, especially young women and especially young women of color. Hmm. So there's a new Gallup poll that finds Democratic voter enthusiasm jumped to full 23 points for Harris since she went to the top of the ticket. Most states don't provide political party affiliation in their registration information. But do you believe most of these new voters will support Harris and Democrats on Election Day? I mean, I, I guess the question has to be asked this way. What's driving this surge? Is it enthusiasm for Harris? Is it outreach by Democratic groups? Is it both? Yeah, it, it, it's it's really an all of the above sort of thing. You mentioned that Gallup poll, and that is really remarkable as well, because that gap, not only did we see that massive 20 point surge that you mentioned, but the gap in terms of what Republicans are reporting and what Democrats are reporting, it's actually bigger than it's been going back to even 2008 when we know Democrats had a massive advantage in President Obama's first campaign. What's driving this? A lot of it is organic. We've seen that organic intensity and enthusiasm among people, especially younger voters who, frankly, weren't very engaged in this presidential election prior to July 21st. They have just engaged on their own. But we're also seeing a presidential campaign and the Harris Walls campaign that is really firing on all cylinders. Joining me now, Democratic strategist and former advisor to the Obama campaign, Amisha Cross and Brendan Buck, MSNBC political analyst and previously served as press secretary to former VP candidate Paul Ryan. Welcome to you both. Good to see you uh, as usual on a weekend. So, Brendan, what did this interview convey to you about Harris's strategy? Uh, well, it ended up being the, the world's most anticlimactic interview. We were waiting for weeks to have this, and it was pretty uh, pedestrian as far as, as interviews go. 
um, it left me wondering you know, why she hasn't been doing this fine. She was she was fine. Um, as a as a matter of uh, politics, though, I mean, she's clearly very committed uh, to this message of being a mainstream Democrat, trying to rebut the image that the Trump campaign is pushing as as her as a, a far left progressive. Um, she clearly had to figure out how to explain uh, flipping on a lot of positions. Um, I think her answer was fine. You know that uh, she's she's learned a lot. Her, her values are the same. I don't know that there is a good answer for changing position on a number of important things, but I think she got through it just fine. And um, the message she is trying to convey is straight from the convention. Um, I'm somebody you can trust. I'm not a, uh, a far left progressive. And she's just going to hope that people are are, are are buying that 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 she is that she's authentic and sincere when she says that. So, Amisha, Harris was asked about the historic nature of her run and that viral photograph of her great niece watching her acceptance speech. And this is what she said. Take a listen. I am running because I believe that I am the best person to do this job at this moment um, for all Americans, regardless of race and gender. Um, but I did see that photograph and I was deeply touched by it. Will she speak more about her identity as a black and South Asian woman? And how does that factor into her broader appeal? Well, there are two things that are going on here. I think that um, as somebody who happens to be a person of color, um, I, I don't think that she has to wear that flag and carry that banner everywhere. People see her. They know that she's a woman. They know that she's a black woman. She has talked about her um, her Asian heritage as well, being an Indian woman. And I think that for her, it is this is who I am. This is what I embody. I should not have to explain that. She's sticking with the policy. She's creating that and expanding that that big take that big tent that the Democratic Party is known for. She's also bringing in people of multiple generations, people of multiple backgrounds, religions, some people of other parties as well, people who fell out of the political cycle in general. All of those things are what matter. I think that Kamala Harris does not want to get um, bogged down in what appeals to the right, which is this anti-DEI mantra, which is this um, racist rhetoric. She wants to lead with action. She wants to lead with her policies. She doesn't have to tell people she's black biracial. She doesn't have to tell people what her historical background is. They can look at her and tell those things. What she's trying to do is rise above some of the attacks I think people have seen before her. She understands, you know, she comes as someone who has seen what Barack Obama went through. She's someone who's seen what the first um, what the first Democratic female presidential candidate went through in, um, in, in what we saw with Hillary Clinton. At this point in our nation's history, she's running against the backdrop of anti-CRT, anti-DEI, reversals of hard fault civil rights wins. She is in the lane that she needs to be in. Yes, she's going to talk about her heritage, but no, she is not going to get bogged down in it and she's not going to allow it to be something that the right uses as a weight against her. And I think that that's smart policy. So, Brendan, Harris stood by President Biden's record, in part because it's also seen as her record, right? But as she preps for the debate, there is some tension within her team about how to separate herself from Biden, especially on issues like the withdrawal from Afghanistan. How does she walk that line? Yeah, I think the difference is, is not necessarily a, a difference of, of policy, but more of, of tone. Um, she <laughs> is her, her message is obviously much more optimistic, much more uh, inclusive. By contrast, Biden's message about democracy being at, at, uh, at threat was kind of dour, a little depressing. Um, and so she she doesn't necessarily have to break with him in substance, but she can present herself as, as a very different person. I think it's not too late. We are still recruiting poll watchers for this election. All right. Yes, That's a good, yes, just an important thing for people to remember, because there are a whole lot of people out there saying, how do I get involved? How do I help? Sounds like you have something very specific that people can do if they want to keep uh, elections in, in Georgia and across the country safe. Eddie Glaude, I want to talk about the way this campaign is unfolding. Uh, Georgia was a thing that, that uh, Democrats had, had written off for a couple of decades. Joe Biden didn't want to write it off. The campaign of uh, the Reverend Warnock was kind of interesting because he had appeal uh, not simply to black voters, but to moderate uh, white voters, to uh, to independents. Uh, and it, it sort of took uh, Georgia into another space. And now Kamala Harris is taking it into yet another space. She's going to southeast Georgia. She's going to places where it might just net her a few votes here and there. But Georgia is won by a few worth votes here and there. Mm. 
Right. Now, look, she has, what, 50 full-time staff in southern Georgia. Uh, um, she has seven offices in southern Georgia. Uh, she has 24 offices across the state. Um, you know, you think about 35,000 volunteers, there's a sense in which they want to play hard. They want to, they, that blocking and tackling, which is so important uh, to, to winning elections. And what's important is that they have to drive up the turnout in Atlanta, in Fulton County, in Savannah, in Columbus, drive up and have historic turnout numbers akin to 2008. And they also have to, what, lessen the, the margin, or, you know, shrink the margin of defeat in Republican counties. And so if they do that, then they're following, Ali, the blueprint that Stacey Abrams and NSA mm -hmm. and all those folks did. Guys, I'm going to say this. Kamala is just too smart to fall for Don Donnie's BS. You know, a lot of people were disappointed in 2016. Of course they were. But Kamala is such a better candidate than Hillary. She really is. Not only, as noted, she has the benefit of the doubt to learn from what happened to Hillary and the missteps Hillary made. So obviously she can correct on those. But she's just, she's better at this. She's just, she's combining like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sling some mud or, or at least my campaign is look at some of the ads mocking Trump, rightfully so. None of this going high BS. No, we're going to get down and dirty when we need to. We're still going to be fair. We're still going to be honest, but we will get dirty, quote unquote, if we need to. But Harris herself is just rising above the BS. No, she's not going to just uh, uh, legitimize Donald Trump's attacks on her for not quote unquote being a real black woman. Like how the frig do you answer that? Like it was a, a, an insult, frankly, that CNN even asked that question. Right. And then news outlets had the gall to say, no, Harris is sidestepping these questions, but she did the right thing. When Donald Trump slings absolute BS like that, she does the right thing by just saying next question, please. Let's talk about something substantive. If Trump brings a substantive criticism, let's talk about it. Otherwise, like I got work to do. I got a, a, an election to win. I have massive crowds to bring together and entertain and inform and inspire. And you could see this noted there. The, look, the election is by no means done yet. I want to make that very clear. Harris has not won yet. No complacency, guys. You know this, but make sure all your friends do too and all your family does too. But look at where the registration is up. It's not just in swing states, to be fair, but registration is up big in a lot of swing states among young people and people of color. And either that's going to swing key swing states in the election, but it might even help win a few districts for the Democrats, a few Senate seats for the Democrats, even if it doesn't have a direct role in the presidency, because Harris is going to need all the votes she can get if she becomes president. So Harris is inspiring people. Donald Trump is bringing them the despair. Harris is bringing massive crowds and Trump is bringing empty arenas. They could not be more different.